Hello grade 10s, in this video we will be looking at electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic waves, the calculations. So I'll be showing you the formulas, we'll be looking at how to tackle different calculations by using the different formulas, and I will show you how to know which formulas to use. Remember to stick around throughout all my videos because I give a lot of teacher tips to help you level up your marks, take it to the next level, get the best marks you possibly can, so let's go. Let's take a look at the different formulas that you need in order to do electromagnetic radiation calculations. So, on the screen, I've summarized all the formulas that you need in order to tackle an electromagnetic radiation calculation. Let's go through the different formulas and what they mean, just so that you know when to apply each formula. So, I've got this formula over here, which looks very similar to a formula that you've learned in the past. So, if you've done your transverse waves and your longitudinal waves, you should recognize a formula that looks like this, where the speed of the wave, V, is equal to the frequency of the wave, F, times the wavelength of the wave, lambda. So, this formula is used to calculate the speed. This formula over here, the one that I have written down for electromagnetic radiation calculations, is the same formula, except instead of V, we use C. And the reason we use C is because C is what we call a constant. It is the speed of light. And the speed of light is a constant, which means it always stays the same. The speed of light has a value of 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And it always, always, always will have that exact same value, 3 times 10 to the 8. And what's very, very, very important to realize is that all electromagnetic radiation, all electromagnetic waves, so light, UV, infrared, X-rays, gamma rays, all of those radiations, all of those waves travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light. F, as you should know, is frequency. And frequency's unit, or what frequency is measured in, is hertz, HZ. This funny symbol over here is called a lambda symbol. It represents the wavelength of a wave. And very important, wavelength of your wave must be in meters if your speed is meters per second, which it is. So remember, we said the speed of light is always 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So our wavelength must be in meters. What that means is if I have millimeters, micrometers, nanometers, picometers, I need to convert. You should know that converting from millimeters to meters, you divide by 1,000, or times 10 to the negative 3, it's the same thing micrometers times 10 to the negative 6, nanometers times 10 to the negative 9, and picometers times 10 to the negative 12. They can give you the wavelength in weird units like this. Like can, they can say, for example, the wavelength of red light is 3 nanometers. And you need to know, uh-oh, that's a nanometers. It's 3 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So the way I remember it is nano is 9, nano 9, okay, then uh, milli, micro, nano, pico, they all go up in threes, 3, 6, 9, 12, this you unfortunately do need to memorize, they're not going to give you this on your formula sheets, however they do give you the constants, so they'll tell you that C is always 3 times 10 to the 8, and they give you the formulas, okay, cool, so we know our first formula, our second formula is the formula that we use to calculate the energy of a photon. So this is energy, most likely energy of a photon or a packet or a pocket of energy or light, pocket of light, energy of a photon. And energy is always measured in joule, J, big J. F is frequency once again, you know what frequency is. And this H is called Planck's constant. Again, do you notice the word constant? Constant means it will always be this value, and that is 6,63 times 10 to the negative 34. It will always be that value, and that will also be given to you on the formula sheet. Now, if you take this formula and you combine it with this formula, we get a third formula which you can use, and it looks like this. So this formula calculates the same thing as this previous one that we just discussed, E 
is energy of a photon in joules. H is Planck's constant. It's being multiplied by C. So just take note up here. It's H, Planck's constant, multiplied by C times. And this is wavelength in meters. So when do I use each formula? So we use our first formula, which is this formula over here, when we are either looking for the frequency of a wave, which is F, or the wavelength of the wave for electromagnetic radiation. Remember, C is a constant value, which means it'll always be the same. Don't use this formula with C when you're working with transverse waves or longitudinal waves. This is only electromagnetic radiation. So it makes sense. If I am looking for F and I give you wavelength, you use this formula because we will know C. And vice versa, if I'm looking for wavelength, and I know frequency, you can use this formula because I know C. So there'll be one unknown. That's quite nice. We use this middle formula if you're looking for the energy of a photon and you're given frequency. Because remember, we will always know H. Or vice versa, if you're looking for the frequency and you know energy. Okay. Use the last formula when you're given the wavelength of a wave and they want the energy of the photon or vice versa. Let's do some calculations. So this question asks me to calculate the energy of a photon of blue light and they give me the wavelength. Okay, now, even if they didn't give me the symbol, if they said calculate the energy of a photon of blue light, 450 Nm, you should be able to look at the unit, which is in meters or nanometers, and you should know meters, hmm, that is a measurement for wavelength. Just remember, we don't want it in nanometers, we need it in meters. So you need to remember the conversions that I showed you a little while back. And they want energy. So this is quite a basic, straightforward calculation, but it always helps to list your variables. So we're looking for energy, and they gave me wavelength, which is 450 nanometers, which we will convert 450 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Now look at your two variables. We're looking for energy. We have wavelengths. Which formula makes sense to use? If you think about the middle formula, the middle formula doesn't make sense to use because although I'm looking for energy, I don't have the frequency. What about the last formula? I'm looking for energy, I have the wavelength, and I will always know H and I will always know C. So I'm going to use the last formula. So choosing your formulas is like looking at what you have, looking at what you need, and then process of elimination. So you write your formula first, so it's HC over wavelength. Remember, this means H multiplied by C. So your H is your Planck's constant at 6,63 times 10 to the negative 34. C is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Please, please, please type in your constants properly. This is to the power of negative 34. This is to the power of positive 8. Those things are important. Divided by the wavelength and not the incorrect wavelength in nanometers. We need to substitute in the wavelength that we just converted to meters. Converting before you start a question is very, very important. Another teacher tip that I can give you that I always give my students is make sure that you use brackets on your calculator when working with scientific notation. Sometimes calculators do weird things, and make sure that your calculator is set to the correct mode. My answer for that is 4,42 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joules. Remember, you need to give me a unit or you do not get your mark. So where would you get your marks in a question like this? It may be three marks, it may be four marks, but you will definitely get a formula mark and you'll definitely get an answer mark, but your unit has to be there. You may get one or two substitution marks. In my opinion, this is worth one substitution mark. Just remember that you're multiplying here at the top of this fraction. Let's take a look at another question. We've got a certain type of electromagnetic wave has a wavelength of 45 micrometers. Calculate the frequency of this wave. Now remember, electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic negative, magnetic waves all travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light. That's super, super important. So it doesn't matter if it's x-rays, radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, whatever. They all travel at the same speed. This may or may not be important in this question. They give me the wavelength. So I know wavelength is 45 micrometers. I need to convert that to meters. So 45 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Again, you need to know your conversion. As soon as you see micro, you need to know it's times 10 to the negative 6. 
And grade 10s, this micro thing can pop up in all of your sections in physics. So you can get micro coulombs, you can get micro amperes, you can get micro volts. So it's very important to learn that micro means times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, calculate the frequency of this wave. So we're looking for frequency. So you might be thinking, mm, I only know one thing. How can I do a calculation? But remember, I reminded you that all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed. So if you look at the formulas that we have available to us, we have wavelength, we want frequency. So we have wavelength, we have wavelength, we want frequency. It doesn't make sense to use this last formula because where do you see frequency? Doesn't make sense. But I can use this first formula over here. So if you take a look at this formula, we have wavelength over here. We want frequency and we always know C is 3 times 10 to the 8. So this is how we pick and choose our formulas. That is my best teacher tip for choosing and how, in, how to know which formula to use. So you write your formula first, you substitute the values in. So C is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. F is what I'm looking for. So you leave it blank. Wavelength is 45 times 10 to the negative 6. We are solving for F. This is times F. So when you want to get F alone, you have to do inverse operations. You have to divide by F. So you're going to go 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 45 times 10 to the power of negative 6. You do that in your calculator. Use brackets, please. And I get 6,67 times 10 to the 12 hertz. Now, my calculator actually said 6,6666666 recurring, but the rule in physical sciences is you are allowed to round off to at least two decimals. So I chop it off there, it becomes 6,67. You can write it to more decimal places. So for example, I could have gone 6,6666667 if I wanted to. And don't forget the times 10 to the 12. That's part of your answer. It means that the frequency is very, very big. So I hope this video has helped you understand which formula to use and when to use it. I will be linking a playlist in the description box below where you will find more videos and past paper examples, past questions. And I hope that these help you. I hope that you subscribe for more physics. And I can't wait to see all of you in another video very soon. Bye, everybody.